We are recording. Beautiful. <laughs> He's not even going to say anything. So, uh, John Carroll is opening some wines. Yes. Hello. From um, Yarden and Galil. Is that that's that's correct? correct? These are all uh, Israeli wines. We're gonna, looks like we're going to taste through the whole portfolio. So, actually, this is uh, a fraction of the Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, there was more. Um, have you guys ever had wines from Israel? I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Very nice. Had Lebanon too, actually. Yes, yeah. some good wines coming out of the region. Yeah. You know, the, the big misconception is, is that uh, you know that particular region doesn't lend itself to you know wine popularity, I should say, where people don't know that wines actually do come from that region, and we do have high quality wines. Uh, we're the number three producer in Israel, um, but we're the premium, number one premium producer. So most of our wines range anywhere from over ten uh, up to thirty. Uh, over 200 gallons a bottle. Um, what you're going to have here is pretty much our mainstream, except when we get down to the end, uh, the Katrin Red, which you're looking at. Um, that is like the Opus One of Israel. Uh, it's made every three years, and uh, about 266 packs are released here in the United States. So um, both our winemakers uh, graduated UC Davis, so they tend to lean towards that California style winemaking. Um, our basically the Golan Heights is uh, basically an old volcano, so we have volcanic soil, which we think lends itself to making premium wines out there. Uh, if you look at the Jordan River as it splits Israel down pretty much the middle to the Sea of Galilee, you have the Golan Heights, which is on the border of Syria, and then you have the Galil Mountain, which is on the border with Lebanon. So that's our two uh, basic grape growing regions. So, how's that for you two? For you? That's excellent. I see the, I see this is a, this is an 03. Yes. Are the uh, seasonally how how different is it from vintage to vintage vintage out there? Uh, they is they basically follow our growing patterns as in, in harvesting. Um, so the one thing we found out with Israeli wines is that they age extremely well, and they're still trying to figure out why. Uh, we were selling 03 Cabernets, uh, and that there the Catrin, uh, you know, you're good for 10 to 15 years aging. Uh, it's very good. And even on some of our lesser wines, you can actually go four or five vintages behind and have the wines do extremely well, uh, even on the whites, which is remarkable. They hold the fruit? Yes, they do. They do. Uh, the one thing that uh, is very typical for Israeli wines is that they're very high in alcohol. Um, that's one of the traits that they get out of it. And, um, you what's know, a, what's it, a typical alcohol by volume percentage? Well, on the bottle, it'll say 13.9. I don't know if we want this one. Uh, may say Good. <laughs> well, as long as we're not drinking it, I think we're okay, right? <laughs> uh, you know, you will see for tax purposes, our wines oh. listed at 14.9, uh, but typically they run into the 15 to 16. Uh, oh, wow. So you will taste a, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will taste a little bit of that uh, burn that you get from the alcohol. Um, well, I like good date wines. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, we we have basically I brought a little bit of everything. Some of the better performers in the categories. Um, nothing really on the low end. We have two blends. I think I did bring a Sienna Creek White, though, um, which is a blended white. Which did you mean about the vintages that if it's a, a, um, a great American vintage, chances are it, it, it will be a great Israeli vintage? Correct. Correct. So, how many varietals <coughs> are they really are they grown? Uh, we're trying a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I was telling you about Barbera. Yeah, it's, you know, the funny thing is, is there's nothing that was indigenous to Israel uh, when they got it back, when the Jewish people took back the land. Uh, through all the wars and everything else, the grapes that were growing there were lost, so they started bringing in different clones to try them out in different spots, and basically they found out that Cabernet does very well. Um, Merlot is another one that's hot-spotted out there, which is great. Um, they started bringing in Barbera, uh, Sangiovese they're playing with, Petit Verdot. Cabernet Franc does very well. So they're trying a whole different approach to the wines where they're bringing in different clones and seeing what actually takes off. And, um, you know, the one thing is that reds do very well in Israel. And they love it out there. So, And these are all kosher, right? Or that or they happen to be kosher, yes. They're not marketed as, as kosher ones, but they are. Yes, that's one, of the, that's one of the benefits of it. You good, know. good question. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's one of the benefits of the wines. It's almost... It's hard not to make a kosher wine in Israel because you have pretty much everything in place. Right. Um, you know, the observant Jews in the winery, you know, in the whole process of it, all you really need is to have a rabbi come in and certify that you haven't used anything that is non-kosher, 
and the making of the wine. And it opens up an entire market for them. Does it go through the same process where they have to they have like flash, cook, almost cook the wine? Uh, no. Or is it the same it's, wine making process? It's the same wine making process. You, you have a choice to make it a bushel, which is a baked wine slash pasteurized. Right. Right. Um, all our wines are kosher for Passover, but they're not in the bushel. And the only distinction between that is if you have a bushel wine, anybody can open it and the wine will stay kosher. When you have a non bushel wine like ours, a Gentile opens a wine, it makes the wine not kosher to the observant Jew. So John has described this. He's absolutely for any of them. <laughs> for any of our I orthodox I customers. I am not to be I don't know. orthodox today. <laughs> to be fair, I don't know John's <laughs> religious affiliation or do I care to, but it's, uh, it's his own business. But, uh, so do we have to let them open their own wine then? For the orthodox, if they come in? Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. They have to open it's their own wine. Can't do it. And in some, in some places in Brooklyn where they're really fanatical, and I mean fanatical because they're on both sides. This is going on YouTube, so be careful. Right? Well, <laughs> to the point, you know, we have our very, um, Catholics have the same thing, the born against things like that. On their side, when they get to that point, uh, a Gentile is not even allowed to look at the bottom. So that will make it non kosher. Yeah, it gets pretty hectic out there. So basically, what they do is they keep a case in the back room, they go back, they grab it, they put it in a bag, and they bring it out. Pay for it, they go. I can look at the bag though. Just <laughs> <laughs> not the label, not the one. So. Interesting. Interesting. Start with this and see how I know you're still open, John, but if we can do one, just real quick, just talk about one, and then I'll cut this off. And we'll be... <clears throat> We're already at like six minutes. So. I have some good information. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> it's fantastic. By the way, John, nice tie. Thank you very much. Basically, at the Golan Heights Winery, we have uh, two tiers uh, that we represent here in the United States. We have the Golan line, which is your consumer-friendly wine. Uh, it is your everyday kind of drinking wines. And then you move into the premium wines, which is our yard wines. Uh, this here is a blend. Uh, we, it's known as Sion Creek White. Uh, it is a blend of Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and Semillon. Uh, really easy to drink. It sees minimal oak uh, just because of the way that it's produced. So you don't really get an oakiness on the smell, but uh, you do get a lot of the crisp flavors uh, from what I think uh, the Sauvignon Blanc offers. They using uh, French oak. They use French and American. French and American. And basically, the oak is passed down from the yard and brand down into the gold. Uh, 